So, so today's topic is about a uh, blockchain and ESG. And then if I briefly introduce myself, I'm a professor studying about uh, innovation strategy and then uh, blockchain. OK, so uh, and then uh, convergence kind of a topic. These are books published under my name for your reference. Okay. So as you know, recently the price of a Bitcoin has been increased dramatically again. At its peak, it became more than 70,000 US dollars. Okay. And then As you can see, when it comes to market capitalization, it has also increased dramatically, as you can see here. And then when it comes to number of people using, we can see uh, India is top rank and then followed by South Korea, Brazil, Spain, US. Okay. So that means when it comes to India, at least about 18% of people uh, used any kind of a cryptocurrency. Okay. So that means, you know, larger number of people than we expect already used the cryptocurrency. So I know there is a variation of your understanding about blockchain. So, but you know, for those who are not familiar with blockchain, I'm going to quickly cover uh, fundamentals of blockchain and then talking about a key issue tonight, today. Okay. So basically, uh, blockchain is a result of uh, digital convergence, just like the case of iPhone. Think about iPhone. There is anything new. You know, Steve Jobs just you know, converged all the existing technology together and become an innovation. Like in a dictionary, MP3 player, navigation, camera, phone, just existing functions combined and they become a great innovation. So same thing happened with blockchain. So these are, are foundational technology which make blockchain work. As you know, the, the first uh, cryptocurrency driven by blockchain was introduced you know, around 2007, 2009. That means when it was introduced, the newest one was a hash function. Still about six to seven years old. Others is a multiple decades old technology. So blockchain itself showed the power of digital convergence as a matter of fact. And how we can define blockchain? There are some ways, but among many methods, based on my experience, if you understand blockchain as a distributed ledger, that will be easiest one. It's like if there are 10 people, 10 people create Excel file. And then Whenever there is a transaction among 10 people, they are all writing together. In the way, everybody keep same data. Okay, that's, that's the meaning of distributed ledger. Second approach is called Internet of Value. Okay, so Internet is very good in terms of exchanging information. But because of a double spending issue, Internet couldn't exchange value like money. I know you just argued against me saying I, we are doing Internet banking. That's your perception. Actually, what you did with your banking website is not sending money. You send request to send your money to another person. And then your bank website understand your request and then process it on behalf of you. You just request. You didn't send. Why? With the internet, we cannot prevent double spending issue. As you can copy same image as as many times as you want, you can copy same money again, 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 again. And with the internet technology, it is impossible 
to prevent double spending. You can just request transaction. You cannot send money. But with the internet, it is possible. You can send money directly. Even you can tell originality of a digital product, like a digital image kind of thing. So-called NFT, non-fungible token kind of thing is possible now. So that's why blockchain is called the internet of value. Now, over the internet network, if by using blockchain technology, you can send money in any kind of digital asset. This is a good example, NFT. One day, a father took a picture of his daughter who was watching the practice of a fireman putting fire on the existing house and they tried to remove it. But when the picture was developed, the father was very surprised. Why? You know, the picture of her daughter looks like someone who put a fire and enjoy the scene kind of thing. So this picture become a meme, so-called disaster girl. And then you can find digitally same image like this one, unlimited time on the website. But father was very smart man. He registered this image on the blockchain network, Ethereum network, as a non-fungible token. That means, although there are millions or billions of same image digitally, but still, her father can verify which one is the original, why it is registered on the blockchain network. So the picture taken in 2005 and then sold for almost half a million dollars on April 2021. Good news for her, transfer ownership never mean transfer of copyright. So although she already made half a million dollars, whenever there is owner change, ownership change, 10% of money should go to her account. So NFT is a good example proving that we can send money value over the network. So many business already adopted this idea. As you can see, luxury brands selling their digital, digital handbag, digital shoes kind of thing, and they make a lot of revenue. Why? In the past, digital shoes, digital handbag can be easily copied without permission. But with the NFT, with the blockchain, we can easily tell which one is the originally paid one. So this kind of thing sh uh, shared a great light to digital artists really nowadays. And another characteristic is so-called the P2P network. That means everybody on the network connected together eventually, very autonomous. And then there is nothing like a strong third part, party at the center, very democratic. Uh, so based on this understanding, let me explain how blockchain work simply with a scenario. Let's say there is a Bob and Alex, okay? Only two members on the blockchain network. And then Bob borrowed $55 from Alex, okay? Just $55, as you can see right here, right? $55, $55, they wrote together. Good. They mean they, they are checking each other. But Alex is a bad guy. Alex intentionally add additional one more digit right here. And then suddenly Alex urged, Bob, you borrowed $155 from me. But Bob's ledger show nothing right here, just 55. That means, oh, although Bob really got upset, there is no way to prove it. Why? This is a 50 and 50. How about there is a one more member called Paul. So when there is an argument between Bob and Alex because of the difference of the value, but because of Paul, we can prove the truth. Paul's ledger clearly show $55 only. And the poor can say, Alex, don't tell a lie. You landed only $55. But life is not as beautiful as this. What happened? 
there is a conspiracy between Paul and Alex. So Alex whispered, whispered to Paul, saying, if you tell a lie, let's share the benefit together. So please tell $155. I'll tell $155. And then Bob, there's no way to argue. Why? Majority tell $155. So and then Alex Paul shared the profit 50 and 50. Sounds good for them, right? But how about this case? There are six people. How many people Alex should pursue to tell a lie? Five. What is the benefit of telling a lie? Used to be 100, one for Alex, with Paul, 50. Now, $20. Would you tell a lie to make $20? Not really. How about this case? How many people Paul should persuade to tell a lie? A lot. How about Bitcoin? There used to be 10,000 computer connected. Bitcoin follow 51% rule. That mean Alex should persuade at least 5,000 computers tell a lie together. Benefit very low. So this one simply shows the power of blockchain. As you can see, it is very transparent. It is tamper proof. One, one thing I want to confirm for your understanding, I use Bob, Alex, Paul, but actually on the blockchain, we use uh, like a, some uh, 256 hexa uh, binary numbers to tell identity. That mean Bob know which one is Bob's but nobody knows who is Bob. Instead of a name, we are using uh, 64 hexadecimal number or 256 binary number, okay? That means everything is uh, transparent, but nobody can tell identity except for someone who owns that cryptocurrency, good? So that's a uh, blockchain. But Bitcoin has a limitation. Why? Bitcoin is designed to support only transaction, very limited. So Vitalik Buterin, Russian immigrant to Canada, developed a great idea called a smart contract. Smart contract, is a, I think he's a genius in terms of naming. Just remember smart contract as kind of a computer programming. Code. Code is a law. That means you study about study real practice in the real world and then reflect them into computing code which is solidity which is a turing complete one so that means code is a law everything will be executed according to existing code okay that means application right you know, application execute everything as a program, the same thing. That's the idea called a smart contract. Analogy is a vending machine. If you use vending machine, you have a contract. You have some contract between you and vending machine. You choose product number and you put the money is higher than the price of a chosen product. And then if you enter the money, you got the product with a change. That's a contract between you and vending machine. Same thing. If you put this kind of a contract a lot, it becomes an application running on blockchain network. We call that decentralized application, DAP. That's the meaning of DAP. So if I use another analogy, Bitcoin is like a single purpose phone. We call it feature phone, only for calling. And then blockchain 2, represented by Ethereum, is called smart contract. You can install as many apps as you want on your blockchain network. As you install many apps on your smartphone, we call, we call that decentralized application. So because of Ethereum, 
Now blockchain can handle not only transaction just like a Bitcoin, but also anything you can imagine. Using Turing complete programming language called the Solidity, you can program whatever you imagine, and then everything will be executed as you designed. We call decentralized application. And then more philosophically, we call that DAO, this decentralized autonomous organization. It sounds like really anarchist idea, right? Without any interference by central government, central powerful men and women, whatever, everything will be smoothly executed. That's the meaning of DAO, decentralized autonomous organization. And then I think, in my opinion, good example of DAO is Bitcoin. Think about Bitcoin. Without any control by anybody, it has run very well without any problem. Although there are a little minor noise, but overall it has been okay. So this is a key. So based on what I have experienced, I hope you now understand the benefit of using blockchain. If you want to enjoy this kind of thing, you should use blockchain. For example, now you understand transparency, right? And then security, very secure, because blockchain uses SHA-256, which stands for Secure Hash Algorithm 256. And they integrate, why? Everybody writing down together. So that means nobody can change any existing value. Democratic governance system, right? Nobody has a superior power. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network. They mean highly democratic, perfectly. Cost reduction, you don't need any central guy like a bank. Without bank, you can send money. That means you don't have to pay fee to the bank anymore. Token economy means if you run any app on Ethereum network, every app can generate token, and then you can use token for many good purposes. So for example, EM Normandy can launch Ethereum uh, app so-called the DAP on Ethereum network. And then if a student to volunteer, that app from Normandy generate Normandy token. And then anybody with a Normandy token use that token at the cafeteria kind of a thing, right? That's the example of a token economy. Because of a token, people volunteer more, right? And then fair wealth distribution. Because everything is so transparent, no middleman can take more than what he or she deserves to have. Identity, uh, you know, like a, we call self-sovereign identity. So using uh, secure hash algorithm, so-called decentralized identification concept, which I cannot cover because of time limitation, you can have a uh, power. You, you can keep your right to handle your data. Nobody can use data without your permission. That's the meaning of identity. And the smart contract I already explained. Traceability means blockchain is a chain. They mean every value is chained together. And then you can trace back to the origin of the value. You can check what happened perfectly. And then collaboration efficacy, because it's highly transparent, because of a token, you can, you can improve collaboration efficacy dramatically. And then TLT, I already explained. Triple ledger means if we adopt blockchain for accounting auditing, up to now we use only debit, credit, debit, credit, very simple. But with the blockchain, you can add one more. Debit, credit, and blockchain. They mean auditing business, like a government even, audit all the transactions so easily by checking only blockchain part. That's why it is called the triple ledger system or triple entry ledger system, debit, credit, and blockchain. So if you need those kind of benefit, you should consider adoption of blockchain technology. But many of my students complain that's too much. So I made this one. You should remember, blockchain doesn't have any good fit with the product and service. If you think about what kind of product can I make with the blockchain, there's no answer. But very interestingly, ironically, the first application of blockchain is a new product and service called Bitcoin. 
So Bitcoin made a huge contribution to blockchain in terms of let everybody know blockchain. But negative is misleading. People just thinking about what I can make, what kind of new product and service I can develop by using blockchain. No answer in many cases. Instead, you should think about how you can innovate existing business process, how you can develop new business model. That's much more important. Good. And then if you're still complaining, three is too long, I can give you this answer. This one, blockchain as a social technology. You can consider blockchain as a tool make our society is a better place to live together. As a tool make your business more socially re responsible business kind of thing, in my opinion. Okay? But if possible, memorize this one. So if you want to achieve any of these things, consider blockchain. Remember, Bitcoin is great, but Bitcoin is just one example of millions of possible application of blockchain. You should pursue something beyond cryptocurrency to realize real value from blockchain. Now let's take a detour, ESG. Okay? So ESG is a, uh, kind of a three major criteria used to measure the sustainability of an investment in a business or project, including environmental, social, and governance. So environment means company's impact on the environment and then how a business act as a steward of the natural environment, such as, you know, efficient use of energy kind of thing. It's an easy concept. Social means, you know, socially responsible, the right of its employee and of other peoples influenced by its activities. But how the company treat and value people as well as meeting the social inclusion criteria, Good? like a diversity, healthy and safe working condition kind of things. And then governance is about corporate culture, policy, and the governance structure kind of thing. Now, like a fighting unethical or unfair practice are a strong part of the culture, for example. Good? These are examples. So actually, uh, people are confused be, uh, among many similar concepts, right? Like uh, SDG 2030 set by United Nations. Personally, I recommend you focus on this one, so, which includes 17 goals, okay? Talking about 17 common goals. Why SDG? Because you know, all UN member countries agree on that one. Okay. It's a shared value globally, no exception. ESG is a summarized version of SDG 2030, I think, but there are some difference. ESG is more investment oriented. That means it's a kind of a guideline of investment. When you make an investment decision, you consider ESG practice of target organization. That means if I flip, flip over, you know, as a company, to get more funding, you should do well with ESG. That's ESG. CSR is very similar, but it focuses on responsibility. It sounds like a, a little passive approach. Responsibility means uh, it's a good thing, but it's responsibility. Right? You don't, have, you don't, know, you don't want to do, but to survive, you should do it kind of a thing. Right? CSB is more active, creating shared value. That means if you make a contribution to our society, you'll be better off kind of thing as a business performance. Like according to the book called The Brand Ideal, the revenue growth rate of a company who really care about CSB is four times higher than those without it. Okay? Anyway, or similar, even if you are Catholic, you should check Laudato C Action Plan. I'm a committee member of that as a faculty of a uh, Catholic university. So Laudato Si action planning, talking about seven goals. But regard, regardless of uh, like a name, it doesn't matter, all good. But personally, I recommend you focus on UN SDG, okay? like this one. It has 17 goals. 
And then ESG is more business oriented. It is about uh, investment. Good. So now let me talk about how blockchain support ESG practice. Okay, number one, environment. So good example is uh, how we handle uh, solar panel installed on every house. So like, you know, logically speaking, if one house has, has extra electricity, it should be able to sell it to others who are in need of more, something like that. Idea is very simple, but not really well working like that. Why? Not because of lack of idea, but because of a tool for making this work. Why? Somebody should recognize which one has deficiency, which one has extra. And then somebody should send money, exchange money, something like that. Sounds very simple, very, very difficult. How about blockchain? Using smart contract, we can make transaction happen automatically. Whenever there is an extra, according to smart contract, it look for any 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 house without uh, without some deficiency, and then send electricity automatically, and then charge the money by using cryptocurrency and receive it over the blockchain network. Something like that. That means blockchain in this case, if you think about how we can improve like the efficiency of a solar panel by using blockchain, no answer. But if you think about how we can innovate the way how people collaborate, identify, exchange value according to cons amount of consumption kind of thing, blockchain is an excellent answer. So this one shows the importance of focusing on process. Another example is a Bluefin tuna. So bluefin tuna is very rare. Why? People love it too much, especially Japanese people. Yes, you know, Japanese people consume more than 80% of a fish, tuna fish. So there is a regulation. If you catch any bluefin tuna, which is shorter than like a feet, you should release it. That means as a consumer, you want to make sure the fillet of tuna you are eating come from adult tuna, how you can. Answer, blockchain. Right at the moment, adult fish is a catch it, a cut. You record it on the blockchain network. When it, whenever it is a separate into the fillet, same blockchain QR code attached to even small, small fillet. And as a user, when you cook tuna, you want to make sure you are eating a tuna, which is a sustainably caught one. How you can do? If you scan QR code by using your smartphone, it show how large the fish was when it was caught. You can verify real picturable fish. So another example. Same thing. When you purchase furniture, you want to make sure your furniture comes from a forest where cutting trees are legal. How you can check? If you scan QR code of a chair you purchased, you can see the location and shape of the real picture of a real tree the chair comes from. This kind of thing is possible using blockchain. As you can see, it is all about process, right? And then social. So have you thought about how much portion of the money you pay to mango actually goes to farmers? Really, really low. Why? Middlemen took too much money. So entrepreneur put whole supply chain practice into blockchain called agri-ledger. Originally, before the adoption of agri-ledger blockchain-driven supply chain management system, 
farmers could take about 5% of the money you are paying. After that, their income increase, increase about 7.5 times, about 30 to 40 dollars. Why that happen? Because everything is transparent, middlemen couldn't take more than what they deserve to have. You know, significant portion of the money you are paying for any product in the supermarket goes to middlemen, not the producer. That means using blockchain, we can make sure everybody get what they deserve. Why you hesitate to donate money? There are two reasons. Number one, you have no idea who take it, who use it. You have no idea also who use your money for what purpose. That's a big problem. But if you adopt the blockchain, because of a traceability benefit, you can see who use your money even at the level of a single penny. Second, using smart contract feature, you can put contract on your money. You can say my money I donated should be used only for milk for baby. If, if people use my money, anything other than that purpose, my money stop working. It's possible. In that way, you can control the usage of the money you are donating. And then when it comes to governance, so we can make sure there is a very democratic governance system with a higher ethical standard. Okay. So this one show how many public sectors are using blockchain technology. And the one example is I think is a, uh, accounting auditing, as I told you. Current practice is what? Company A record transaction on debit credit. Company B to do the same thing when there is a transaction between company A and B. And then auditing is done once a year. That means very easy to do some manipulation. Worst case, as an auditor, you are looking at 12-month-old record. How about blockchain? As you can see, if you add blockchain right here, so debit, credit, blockchain, debit, credit, blockchain. So by checking blockchain, you can clearly see what's, what are, what's, what's, what's going on on company A and B. Okay? So it will dramatically improve efficiency of auditing. Also, what? Ethical standard of accounting practice. Another thing is uh, voting. You know, there is a lot of issue about voting. And then so many people say the result of a voting is a manipulated uh, and then they do re-voting kind of a thing. But what happened with the blockchain? Number one, whenever there is a vote, everybody writing together. That means nobody argue about the accuracy of voting. Second thing is more important actually. You can, you know, now with the current system, if you, once you vote, you cannot change your vote. Let's say you, you vote for candidate A, but after that you realize candidate A is a terrible guy. You want to change it, but can you change it? No. How about blockchain? You can do it. Why? You add your identity on the on your voting and as long as you can prove it that id is yours you can take it back and then vote it again as many times as you want as long as voting is not closed you can do it over okay so that kind of a benefit is available yeah? uh, and then estonia is an excellent case actually uh, people misunderstood estonia as a uh, like a good example of a blockchain application, but that's not true actually. Estonia innovate government service by using blockchain. That means, especially 
every citizen of Estonia can control usage of personal private data. For example, you know, if you go to hospital, you share your data about your body condition kind of thing. But sometimes you are not sure how they handle it, although there are some regulation. I know there's a European regulation covering whole EU country. I like it very much. But basically, you have no idea. But Estonia, yes, you can tell. Just like a blockchain. But one thing I want to make sure, Estonia doesn't adopt the blockchain. Estonia developed their own system, but it happened to be very similar to blockchain. So in that regard, you know, Estonia is a great country. Why? Even before the introduction of blockchain, they developed their own version of something like blockchain. Okay? And then another interesting thing is uh, uh, like a politician can do something. So this, this one uh, is a, on top left is a uh, Callaway. So city council member of London who ran for the mayor position of London, he said that he will become a blockchain mayor. How come? He said, you know, he put record of budget usage on blockchain. In the way, he will use all the budget highly transparently. That's what he promised. But unfortunately, he lost the election <laughs> anyway. So I think he was too early to promise that. Real pioneer anyway. Bottom right side is a former uh, prime minister of South Korea who ran for the presidency. And what he pre uh, promised, cashless country. He said he is going to issue uh, central banking, uh, like a CBDC, central banking digital currency, like a block, uh, cryptocurrency as a uh, currency for South Korea, but he also lost the election. Anyway, so they are, I think it's a pioneer <laughs> anyway. So those kind of things will be possible, absolutely. Okay, now, so I'm done. Okay, now let me conclude my lecture by asking one question. What is this one in your opinion? Decentralization, non-discrimination, openness, universality, and consensus. Anybody can tell? Is it talking about what technology, in your opinion? Easy question. Anybody? We have the question, have question from Professor Lin. Um, any inputs? Any ideas? So this is a... What is this one? These are te this characteristic talking about what technology? That's my question. Well, I can make a small analogy. So the person that you see on the slides of Professor Lim is the individual who introduced us the World Wide Web. Yes, right. There is a, this is a clue, right? Actually, it's this one is, exactly. sounds like a bl blockchain, but that's not blockchain. This is a dream of internet. But this is very important one. Why? Uh, Joanna? Yes, any question? Yeah. yeah, we have a raised hand, Professor Lim. So we have one student um, who wanted to make input on your question. Joanna, please do. Yeah, hello. Thanks a lot for the first video of the presentation. It's super interesting. And I was just maybe thinking here when I see that I kind of think of like all the internet and stuff, but maybe I'm saying something totally wrong, but I would have thought of this technology. Yeah, so so why I ask this question, this is an internet tech. I'm talking about internet. At the beginning, internet was very revolutionary technology. Look at your decentralization, non-discrimination, openness, universalist consensus. Sounds like a blockchain, but what happened with this one? Originally, internet was revolutionary, but now it become evolutionary. Instead of revolution, we made evolution or innovation using internet technology. How about the future of blockchain? You know what blockchain says really, real revolution, like anarchist idea, no government, no bank, nothing, really. Sounds like very dangerous, <laughs> right? You know, anarchists really like that, so-called DAO, decentralized autonomous, autonomous organization. They mean country without government kind. My question, is it going to happen like that? Can we use, you know, P2P only 
decentralized finance only without bank. I don't think that happened. Why? Banking business is a number one adopter. They are aggressively adopt. Why? They have two choices, to be or not to be. If they are oh, bank, you know, blockchain talking about no bank, let's kill it. That's a to be or not to be approach. Second, uh, blockchain is a reality. Let's convert blockchain from revolutionary tool to evolutionary one, supporting our business. That's a common solution. Now, at the beginning, people surprised, but now they adopt blockchain as a part of our life, their business, and then they aggressively adopt blockchain. Why? To convert blockchain from revolutionary tool to evolutionary. Just like what happened to the internet. So that's my forecast of blockchain future, like a definance, web 3.0 kind of 